Good afternoon. Good afternoon. In the southwest, when the sun is still up, it's afternoon. When the, when the sun goes down, then it's dark. Hey. <laughs> okay. Let's have a few words. Mother, Father, God, as we come together here today, we ask your infinite protection placed around and through each and every one, that only the highest and best will come forth in our thoughts, words, and actions. And through those thoughts, words, and actions, let it lead to a better understanding of our own selves. And we meet those on our path to a better understanding of that. We give thanks. Amen. Amen. What we're going to do tonight is have a, what we call an open forum. So if you have any kind of question or any comment or anything, is it, is it, is there's no limit on what you can ask. Hi, Lady J. Hi. <laughs> She's here. Did you hear what I just said? No, she was just getting on. What'd you just say? We're, we're having an open forum tonight. That, that means you can ask any question you all want on, on spiritualism or, or uh, metaphysics or any, any development. Oh, wonderful. It's kind of nice because, you know, it gives us a, a moment to... Uh, you know, reflect on and all the things that we've been, you know, talking about or um, whatever and gives us time to talk. Julie, can I mention what we talked about before? Sure. Julie had a question she didn't know she had. She, she was saying, <laughs> my neck is, is, is hurting in a certain way. And I said, well, what aren't you doing that you want to do? And she said, well, no, that's my neck. And I said, the symbol of, of the neck being, being uh, affected and everything is that you're not doing something that you really and truly want to do. And you're doing it someone else's way. And so just, just start concentrating on, I'm doing it my way. That's the best way for all people concerned. And, and then you're going to get ideas on what to do differently. Start doing that. Look at her face. That's so weird because I was listening to that song My Way today <laughs> about two hours ago and I started crying. Wow. Wow. Oh, wow. So you got the answer to that, didn't you? Thank you. <laughs> wow. Holy smoke. So it's, it's I'm gonna move this thing out of the way. It's interesting how uh <laughs> spirit likes to really help you. You know, mm -hmm. they just they have music for you. They have newspapers or whatever, articles, books. You li me, I listen to books when I'm driving in the, down the road, and it's all about this. It's all about spiritualism. It's all about psychic medium training to, to auras. We were just talking about auras, Amy. Um, all those things. So, And then I hear something, and I'm like, Thank you, spirit. Thank you. And it's just, it's in the book, but there's a message for me, you know, all the time. Or something on the radio, you know, if you guys listen to the radio. Welcome, Reverend Jennifer. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. We're talking on our open forum. <laughs> so we're all chatting it up and chatting it up. So questions, questions. What What is our next uh, topic going to be? Which is what? That is the topic. Next, next topic. topic. Oh. After <clears throat> We're going back into 12 powers, I believe. <laughs> Good. Because um, we do usually do the beginning stages of the 12 powers to get uh, the, 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 the absorption of it. And then we take a pause and do some other classes or other teachings. And then we go into the last part of them. Yeah, that was a lesson I learned 30 some years ago. I started a, a 12 powers classes. Uh, at, the, at the beginning, there was 30 some people at the class. Uh -huh. When I got done with it 12 weeks later, there were four people in the class. Wow. <laughs> And so, but but I realized that the, the vibration of the chapel changed during that the, that, that 12 weeks. And it, it, it was a much more higher vibration. So I, I but, but then I decided to spread, spread it out and not do it all at one time. Our next one is order. Oh, 
I believe we do two classes of order. Yeah, I'm glad I'm in the one area besides the one I missed that we couldn't get back and I'm gonna read about it. That's the one area that I was wishing for more insight, but I thought, well, that's okay. When we do the big class next year, <clears throat> it'll come together, but I'm glad we're doing that. You're so right about that. Uh, the metaphysical principles will go into deeper about auras for sure. Yeah, and everything. And, and we're having um, a clap date, Reverend David, when I'm having the my surgery, Reverend David's gonna be doing on Saturday, um, April, is it April or May? What did, April. Jennifer, do you have that information in front of you? What I texted you, my apologies. We're gonna do auras class. Oh, that would be good, good for us. Psychometry. Psychometry oral. first. And then, then we go so from psychometry, you have auras. And then from auras, we're gonna go to past lives. Past life regression, past lives. Because in the, in the astral aura is, is your past lives. And is that this Saturday? No. no. That's in, uh, psychometry will be May 14th. And auras will be May 21st. And then past lives will be the la the next Saturday after that. So they're all gonna be like a group training kind of thing that goes one goes into the other. But and they're all 12 o'clock our time. So it'll be what two your guys' time? Yeah. Well, and I noticed that some of you guys, um, I think maybe we're the only true beginners. Like some of you seem like you've been in this a long time. You're already, you know, <clears throat> I, and you had talked about in the beginning of class or, you know, that to go slow, not to have it be your everyday thought. And I, I found that at the very beginning when we started, I wanted to read every single book. And then I, I think David said that and I said, okay, wait a minute, slow down. Don't get too excited. You know, and so when do you think it is appropriate for beginners to start taking extra classes? I mean, I've sort of made myself just do this and then read a lot, you know, read. Okay. Um, when do you think it's good to start taking the extra classes? To answer that, you know, is that you're not a beginner. You, you do what you can absorb. You use wisdom to do what you can absorb. And, and there's, a, there's a part of your being that will tell you, you you're getting too much. And this, and this is the control of enthusiasm. You know, control of enthusiasm and everything like this, you know? Is that, but when you get into the principles course, you're not going to understand that principles course the first time you read it. Right. It's going to take time to read it. And there, there's people that go through the whole course and they're still reading it two or three times. Okay, so it comes with an actual book. Yes. Every week you'll get something new that you add to the book. Oh. And at the end of the session, you'll have your entire team. Oh, workbook like this big. Cool. <laughs> um, uh, everyone I find um, that is just starting out with any of, well, that they know of in this lifetime. that they're Right, that's not that you know, new in this type of learning is that they, once they start grasping something and it's like, you know, a child when they're opening up this creative thinking, they're like, whoa, I want to know. And they just, you know, want to grab everything they can and right away. And that's natural that that happens. However, it burns people out and we've seen them go right into metaphysical principles and they get stuck because they don't, you know, they didn't go slow with everything, start with self-realization. That's why we have specifics now where we say start with self-realization, go into metaphysical principles, and then eventually seminary. So um, there's a reason for it all because, you know, we absorb things and we're the t it, it, you know everything that we've done in school <laughs> is uh you know absorb quickly and learn that and pass the test and now move on and then you're like wait what did i learn there it's like oh yeah i got through that okay like move forward like what else is there come on bring it on and you have this pile of stuff at your home or whatever but what did you absorb right 
And so the main thing, you know, after your principles, it's, you know, um, to teach it. Because, yeah, because teaching is the best part of like, even if Dave did it to me, he, he said right away, he's like, now you're going to teach it. And I was like, oh, no, <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing, David. He goes, that's the only way that your self will absorb exactly what you learned. And he's I right. Get you know? I get that. Absolutely right. So when you get through that, we definitely say, yes, do that for sure. So you can get on the platform, start doing all these, you know, 12 powers that we do on Saturdays, once a month, um, like this thing, he's teaching psychometry, um, all these things. We have so many teachings here, as long as it's the, within the, what we teach. That's the thing. We don't want someone to come from outside and just come in and just teach something that is not spiritualism, you know, that wants to talk about saints or something. Well, unless we're what talking is, spiritualism. What is uh, psychometry exactly? What is psychometry? Yeah, I'm, I'm just blanking on what it is. The, the ability to uh, pick up vibrations and, and, and experiences from an object. Ah, okay. Thank it, you. It, it picks up wherever that object has been, it'll pick up uh, uh, vibrations with it. Yeah. That'll be interesting. Isn't it interesting when you've picked up someone's jacket and handed it to them? And you, have you ever done this where you've like picked up something that's theirs and you go, oh, something's not quite right. Or you're like, oh, that feels so good, right? Whatever it is, it's someone else's something and it's their vibration and you get it and you, you like you're, there's something there that you're in the middle of at that very moment while you're handing it to them, but you don't know what it is and you just kind of blow it off and you just hand it off to them and start talking to the, you know, whoever you're with. That's psychometry right there. You just connected to their energy. And if you were in a reading, boy, what could you get there, yeah. you know? And, and there, are, there are some uh, interesting things that go along with it too, you know. If, 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 if the object has been owned by one person all the, all this history, that, that makes it more simpler. But if you have a, an object that's been handed down but four or five people, you're going to get four or five people's vibration okay. and experiences, and they may not know about them. Yeah. Or if you go to hand, um, secondhand shops, the hand stores. Yeah. 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 I almost said, hand me and down. You know, I don't a know little why. bit of example of psychometry you know, is organs transplants. Yeah. You know, when a person gets an organ transplant, they have all the history of that person coming into their, their body. Well, they, do they have their DNA also coming in? Sure. Well, of course. So it's not just their history, it's the whole line of histories. Wow, well, that's... Mm -hmm. There's... You know, when, when I was taking anatomy, the professor in the class said that when the seed came together in your mother, all their experiences were in, that, in those seeds. Yeah. I want to say something on that, David, if I might. Go ahead. Um, I had followed uh, stories about this. I just thought they were fascinating that when someone got a transplant, because my grandfather got one from a pig valve. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I thought, whoa, no, that's going to be weird. He didn't live to complete it out. He That was his way out. He wanted to get going. So that was his way of exiting out by having that surgery. However, um, there's, you know, so many people have had um, heart, had eye, um, many different versions, and they actually started seeing things happen. There's been movies about it, uh, that people will start seeing these visions of the other person's life uh, or start feeling things from their heart that were the other person's experiences from their heart, you know, mm -hmm. how they say the heart is everything now, now mm -hmm. they're talking about the heart. It, it was just amazing stuff. So yes. 
to, to some of the things that I've learned from spiritualism and metaphysics is that there's so much connections to, to different experiences and different people and everything, you know, and there, there's a logic to it. And sometimes it's not logical, but it is logical. The order of things are, if you understand the principles of that, you can understand why you do things. Mm -hmm. that, that's one of the reasons we want to develop is that we, 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 we develop to be able to know what not to do as well, what to do. And mm -hmm. how to learn not to do if we don't understand what we did. And there's an order to every, every manifestation, there's an order to it. Yeah. And, and as you study metaphysics and you study spiritualism, you study yourself and you get that order in there and then you can make some changes in there so you don't get the same result. And you also can do it to make the better, better results too. Yeah. You have good experiences too and there's some things in there you can improve upon. <clears throat> there's this other teaching that Reverend David has done and it, we went in these amazing places and this was universal metaphysics. And uh, that's after you, your seminary. And uh, it's, it lasts, what, probably around a year, right, David? Something yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. And we go into, oh my goodness, what are all the uh, cosmology, um, supernatural, supernatural yeah, all the sciences, five sciences. Um, wow. I was like, I remember those ones. I was, my eyes were just popping out because it's like, we're talking about our entire universe and how we are connected. And I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to give it away. Oh, I want to do that now. <laughs> I know. We were like, you even just... Now. Even when he was prepping for his class and I was sitting there, I was just like in awe about all the information that's out there about our, how we exist, how we're being. That's pretty fascinating. Would you, you remind me of where I can go to find the ones that the classes I've missed? Uh, yeah. just, you just go right on our website and it'll say, um, um, go to our YouTube channel, or you could just go to YouTube and look up United Fellowship Chapel, and you could go to all those. Now we have one of them missing, and apologies there, Tracy. That's okay. <laughs> uh, the aura is the first one, the eight. I don't know what happened. It, it happens. Well, I'm not remembering everything anyway, so... <laughs> Yeah. Oh, this this one. last class we had the first one. The first one is missing. Yeah, the eight. Uh, I think I I think I was doing that one, wasn't I, David? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what happened. It was either mine or yours. One of those things that just disappeared. Mm -hmm. Oh, we were recording it, and it just yeah. Yep. And, and I and I tried to get back on Zoom yeah. to see if Zoom had it, and they didn't. Anyway, I thought David did all three of the. Or classes. Mm -mm. No, you did the first one. Okay. Arlene did one. You did both of the other two. Yeah. 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 That's right. Because one of them was supposed to be um, Ernestine, I believe. The first one. How is she? She's doing good. She, she well, we're going to we have this recording, but she, um, her husband's in surgery right now. So he's, he has a, hand surgery thing going on so no it's more than that um he had some cancer okay. removed so he's he's currently in the surgery so if you can all have a put him in your healing box hmm. his name is tim yeah so i guess if i had one question uh during this open forum it would be I'm fascinated when Dave, Reverend David discusses the right side of our bodies. Like if, if there's pain on this side, if that's our masculine side. Mm -hmm. and, and it just so happens that all of my pain and ailments are all on my right side. But we've never gone into detail what to do to like try and begin fixing those ailments by figuring out what what this is trying to tell me 
What part of the body is trying to tell me? What, what part of the body? Uh, mainly shoulders. Okay. Uh, shoulders. Uh, um, if I had the main complaint, would be shoulders and neck. Is it on the outside or inside? Both. Well, the shoulders represent responsibilities. And if you got pain in the shoulders, then, then, then you're, you're, you're doing other people's responsibilities and not allowing them to do their responsibilities. And you also have the neck? Yes. We already, we talked about it already about doing it your way, not other people's way. You've done a lot of things that other people's way and, and you're almost forced to do it the way other people want to do it. Now is the find a way to be easy to do things your way. When the, the, the next time you're doing something and other people have done it a different way and you get an idea to do it your way, do it your way and you'll see that it works out a lot better and other people will accept it. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. And, and you also have what we call a male aspect. Uh, and if, if it's sort of on the inside or anything like this, you know, each of us have a male aspect, you know, and, uh, and so uh, the male aspect has a responsibility and has a way of doing things, you know, and so find your way of doing that, that male aspect. Uh, and it, there, there's certain situations that happen in there where, where uh, uh, the male aspect will do it a certain way. Uh, and, and it hasn't been done before, so you, you have the ability to do it that way and start doing it. Gotcha. Uh, when he was talking or when we had that pause there for a minute, I was going to say, and don't tell him what you're doing ahead of time either. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you know how, you know how when you tell someone, I have this idea, this great idea, and you tell them everything. And they go, oh no, no. Here, like, let me just let me just change this whole thing for you. And then they throw it back at you, and you're like, the whole thing's changed. I don't even know, yeah. you know, and then all of a sudden you do it that way. And it's not your way. Yeah. You know, and it just take it's a takeaway. So a lot of times it's it's just it's really good just to kind of keep it in your pocket until you're ready to let it out to the world, you know. In my first year here at the chapel, I, I, I was talking to the founder of the United Fellowship Chapel. I said, you can make a living at doing this. And yeah. she started laughing at me. And I said, well, how are you going to pay your bills? I said, well, money. This is got hilarious and everything. And so I decided, well, I'm not going to talk to anybody about that anymore. I just went about doing it. And, and I did it, you know. And it took me 20-some years to get things to go. It took me 25 years to do the principles course. It took me five years to do the self-realization course, but I did it, you know, and so and I didn't tell anybody what I was doing. I just did it. Mm -hmm. And it's been working pretty well. Yeah. Right. Do you have some? I have a question. Can you, can you hold on one second? Julie's just been trying to get in here real quick. So oh, okay. Give me one second. Uh, okay. I had a question. So I've been doing my protection and every morning and, you know, when it says visualize, your favorite color around you. I've noticed lately. So it's what? When I, hmm? It's changing. It's changing. Well, I, you know, I, I know it used to be I would see one color, and then it became like a shimmery combination of colors. Now lately, I see like a light color around my body, and then at the very edge is a really like um, deeper, like a like a an indigo blue. All around, and I don't, and I, I don't know if that means something. It means you're changing. <laughs> okay. Well, what are you That's doing? You're not doing that. Okay, because I just those are very powerful colors. Okay. Yeah, because yeah, it's strange. It was. It's not just. It's like this weird thing where, I'm, I, and I'm seeing it. I'm not seeing it. I used to be amused by people when they said, "Well, my favorite color is so and so. It doesn't come up anymore." I says, "Well, you're different. You're changed." Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, that's interesting because I'm listening to something. Like I said, I'm listening to a book about that. Oh. And that they were talking about the auras and how when they change, 
it was uh, basically the same thing you've said many times, you know, when someone's changing a different color or changing a different pattern, then something's going to happen. Like they're, they're opening up something, they're changing something in some way. And so um, sometimes things stop for people. Um, I'm trying to think of what it was yesterday. Someone was saying, we were talking to someone and, and they had said that, um, oh, their meditation practice, um, this was in Qigong for, uh, that I do on Mondays. And they had said, you know, I'm really having a hard time um, meditating all of a sudden. This is um, a woman, she's probably like, 76 she's been meditating all along she even channels and everything and she said i just all of a sudden i just within like 10 15 minutes i'm done and i was thinking haha she has something new coming up you know it's gonna it's gonna you know shift into something more more uh teachings or more maybe she's got another master coming through you know like did, did, did she say that, that, she, that, that, that this, the meditation is going quicker well, she just uh, doesn't need to do it anymore. And so her master, her, um, her um, guide is saying, okay, you're good. And then that's right at the same time that she's also saying, okay, I'm good. She doesn't need to sit in it for like 20 minutes or whatnot. She sits in like 10 minutes. The closures are a lot quicker now. Mm -hmm. She should act on them now. Yeah, she's just confused why it's happening. I'm like, don't be confused. Yeah. yeah. No, what did, I didn't hear what he said. I he's what was lower. That? He's lower than you are. I can't hear what he said. Oh, okay. That last bit. What'd you say, David? <laughs> That's funny because most of the time it's channeled. It's channeled. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Is it possible for him to turn his volume up so I don't have to keep changing my volume? Well, here's the deal. I'm going to get closer to him because we have that that big tele the big screen we have. Unfortunately, it's not available. It's not working for us. So we're using my computer sound. Yeah, well, you're very loud. It's not very soft. So okay, now can you hear him? Can you hear me now? That's better. Oh, much right. much superior. All right. <laughs> and I'm in the middle of the room. <laughs> so when the meditations change, you think that's an indication of a new master coming in? No, it, it's a sign that you're getting the information quicker. Oh, okay. Receiving the information. I think it's not much more. Just do it. So there, there's a, a, a space in development is that when you, you want to confirm things before you do them. When you get to the point where you don't have to confirm them, then you do it. Th you do things quicker. One of the biggest benefits of spiritual development is quickening of time. Wow. Like, say, for instance, um, in our um, Jennifer's been in this in our um, uh, trance or physical phenomena core uh, class that we do for development after the course we go directly to the Himalayas and we're there within a minute, like not even a second, we're there. And so we're doing things there 25,000 years ago that deals with here and now. And so we've got strength with ourselves. We've, you know, we, we, we're, we're in command of ourselves. We know what we are over there, which helps us over here. You know, I've been traveling. I, I go through all these little tunnels and, you know, I mean, it's pretty, pretty neat stuff. So when you're, when you're, when it's faster or when you're in that development, everything's quicker. So I have a question. Am I ready for that now? Yes, yes. Oh, I actually have two questions. I want to ask about my AFib, but before that, in August of 2021, I have notes and I have it in big green letters. Don't ask for energy of the divine to come in. It's already in us. But when we, not bought, and <laughs> I, I agree that it's in us, but yeah, I can't keep that word out for some reason. 
it seems as though when we ask for it to come in, it's not that it's going to come in, it's that our awareness of it is going to come in. Because lots of times I'm not aware of the divine. I have to actually think of the divine before I'm aware of it. You, you know what you're doing? I don't have no idea what I'm doing. Most yeah. of the time. You're, you're dealing with what's been taught to you religious, religion wise. That's kind of a little bit fundamental. Yeah. A little bit. You know, what, what, when, when you know divine is within, it doesn't matter when you say it, or what you do it, 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 it's ignited. When you inhale, mm -hmm. what happens when you inhale? It, 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 the, the freshness of the, of, and you may not think it's fresh, but it is. It's fresh and it ignites all the vitality in your body when it does that. It doesn't come in, it's already there. It's igniting in your in your when you inhale, that's being ignited within you and everything. Uh, and it, once you really truly understand that standard, you don't you don't debate it, you just understand it and, and act upon it. And so uh, uh, when you say when you're asking for divine to come in. You're you're reinforcing the teachings of religion. That some that we're without something. Without something, yeah. And we're separate. We're we're not separate. So like I understand like, about the not being separate, but it's the awareness that sometimes I'm just not aware. I'm right. too busy you're doing the everyday stuff, the you cooking and the right now is but. Say it again. Your awareness right now is but. Saying the but. When you say but, you're saying the opposite of what you just said. I understand. That's what was confusing to me as to why I kept saying but. That's not, I don't use that word a lot. Well, so so you what you're saying is what I think I know, I don't know. Yeah. And then when you don't know, you do know. <laughs> <laughs> you know how we always say we is you know because it's right now we everything is you know there is no before behind i mean we're we're currently in that right now like if let's just say uh we want to feel peace where is that coming from we is peace you know we 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 ignite our peace, right? Um, it's just like the channel, you know? You know, we talk about the whole metaphysical version of, you know, it's just like turning a channel and you're in that frequency. It's the mind thought process of it out here to in, in here, it to just change the channel of your thinking. I want you to think of something. Every time you say the word "but," stop and see what what do you what are you are you saying and what are you doing? Because the, the the language that we say "but," when you say "but," you're saying the opposite of what you just said before. Mm -hmm. It's like a takeaway. So just stop and think. Now, what am I saying? And let that information come to the surface, because that's within you too. Everything that's been taught to you is still inside you too. Julie? I, I, my two cents worth is that it comes down to religion and mysticism, experience and thinking, and being, and um, not getting caught up in what, what you're thinking and just experiencing it. Logic to no logic. <laughs> Well, I always thought that when you said but, it erased everything before that you had just said. Whoa. Yeah. So I, I think that I've got to rethink this now. So I've, I've written it down. If I use the word but, it means I'm saying the opposite of what I just said. Right. Okay, I got it down. I just got to start noticing it, and I will do that. The other question I had is, I'm struggling with this AFib, although I think maybe I've got a control on it, but what what does it mean when your heart is beating irregular or away? 
that, that there's something in your life that's irregular. And that it's uh, related to the heart. And that's, that's a love area. Yeah. So there's some sort of love area that- There's an experience in you that's irregular. Mm -hmm. So what you do is I say, I am regular in my love area. Uh, right. You may get different ideas on what that is. Listen to it and act on it. He's going to be also uh, doing at the end of this month, the healing certification on Saturday, the last two weeks of the month. And that will help with the different locations and you know, um, you know, the body, et cetera. Um, he does have, you know, there's other things that are being taught in there, but that could be helpful if you would like to become a certified healer or just come to it for healing information. Mm -hmm. So that's the last two Saturdays of April. Yeah. Those are $15 each. There'd be two classes. And sign up on the website right yeah and what are the hours on that please 12 to 1 yeah. our time that's arizona time so it's uh, where are two, you at two. i'm in boise idaho is, and, but i'm on daylight savings time and you guys aren't anymore so. what time is it now at your place because it's, it's five it's five it's six thirty five okay an hour difference Mm -hmm. so it'd so be one o'clock your time it'd be one to two my time and that's usually a doable time and we just we just planned this today so you won't see it on the website until probably tomorrow because i gotta get a graphic up and stuff like that so just a heads up for you give me a couple days <laughs> yeah okay um and the reason we're doing that is because things are loosening up now and people are, we can get closer to each other now and laying out of hands, you can't get close. We yes. We haven't been able to do that for three years. God, yeah. Is this going to include laying on a hand? Yeah. Oh, okay. And we'll talk about distance healing, all that stuff. So it'll be interesting. Yes. Yeah. It's really good. Well, I have another another pondering. If nobody else has any pondering, I want to give somebody else a chance. <laughs> So I have written in, and this came from, let me see the date, 1116 of 21. Don't talk about what you're getting rid of. And I don't understand, is it about my hit on it when I read it? And I put this in red. So that's why some of these things just stand out. If, if I talk about it, then I'm reinforcing it just by talking about it. Is yes. that what that means? Yes. When you talk about it, you are it. Your, your subconscious says, oh, yes, I'll get more of it. So you know how we got those, uh, <clears throat> let's say, let me, I'm, I'm thinking of a particular thing, uh, a job that's really cruddy, right? You, everybody's had one of those. And then we're talking about it, talking about, talking about, and it just gets worse and worse and worse because we're doing it in the circle of our life. We're just talking about something. We're putting it right back in there. And then we have another credit job. And then we're talking about that one. And then we go and change to another credit job. And, you know, it, we're just talking about it to all of the employees and all the, you know, things we don't like or whatever it is. It could be a, a person. It could be whatever. And then we re-experience another person exactly like that. And then we experience another situation just like that because we're putting it in that circle again. We're just re-emphasizing it and we're bringing it right back in. But if we don't pay any attention and the energy is not, that's yours, <clears throat> is not yours, you're going to be able to, you can't walk over this. It's a cord. Oh my goodness, you. Give me a second. Oh, you just went through the, no, 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 back up. <laughs> Hold on, guys. Hi there, give us a minute. Yes, no problem. I'm just letting you know. Could you take his bag right yeah. there? Which one is it? This? What? Oh. I see two bags. Okay, go, go, go. Okay, just the one right by the door. Okay. And his jacket. jacket. Yeah. You want to put it on? Yeah. 
<laughs> That's going to be a fun recording. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> anyway, if you keep. David, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Have a good week. He says, see you next week. Tell him to have a good week for me. Did you hear? Huh? Have a good week, she oh, said. Thank you. Okay. So if you if you keep putting in the same information or thinking about the same stuff, energy is with energy. So it's going to be. It's just, it's going to be. And well, that's what I thought, but I didn't have it written down. So I wasn't sure that I was right. So thank you for confirming it. Yeah. It's just a matter of our focus and what we're doing and what we're paying attention to. Yeah. Welcome to our chaos. <laughs> and uh, Julie. I have a, it, 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 I have Nobody's a talking. Go okay. for it. Yeah. I have a question about in, in terms of the whole teachings of metaphysics and spiritualism, where do um, the idea of angels fit in? Oh, that's a big one, right? Everybody, I mean, everyone, yes. everyone connects with angels in such a different way. Mm -hmm. So um, some people think of angels as a part of their guide system. Mm -hmm. um, for me, just this is my own. Uh, I have my angels as another supporting system, just like I would have my guides. Mm -hmm. So when I do like my opening prayer or like my, uh, you know, wake up prayer or evening prayer when I'm going to sleep and or connecting them to do something for me, with me, I'll always put them into that circle and I always say like, mother, father, God, healing angels, guides, ancestors, gatekeeper. I just get everybody in there, you know, and then I say whatever I'm saying to them or if there's something specific nowadays, um, we've been really working with our gatekeeper and we're talking, having the gatekeeper talk through us in trance, which is really fun. Right, Jennifer, that's pretty cool. And, uh, and that's so powerful, but for the angels, where does it come into play? They're all a part of us, you know, and they are us. We, we you know, if you think of all of this, is in inside our universal system and we are a universe. So like, you know how you were talking Lady J, like this thing on the outside or whatever. If we think of ourselves as a universe, we have all these things inside and those are all people, planets, all the above. Well, we've got angels, guides, we've got everything in there. We got all of our Akashic records in there, everything we've ever done, um, how we've been taught is that we're without it, that we don't have that amazing universal, powerful, extremely powerful ability to do anything and get anything from inside. Um, when we're talking about that, like it makes me think about when my ancient master came through the first time and he, if some of you aren't aware who he is, he's yellow emperor, which was from China, which he had in his lifetime, he had, um, had like a guru help him understand to communicate to the spirit world. And when he did that, he was able to understand how he was going to make a calendar, how he was going to teach people to do acupuncture. I mean, you name it, there's an entire book on his teachings, how he created things. Um, and then how I ended up, the connection, I was like, how, why am I learning this? But his main thing was that you're learning from the spirit world and I did too. And mm -hmm. it's all universal energy 
Because all of a sudden, as soon as I connected with him, then I connected that I wanted to do Qigong. And I was like, why do I want to do Qigong? Well, he's the one who was doing all the moves. I was like, what's going on here? Like, and then I'm all into all these different puzzle, linking all the puzzle pieces of the mystery teachings and the cards and the this. And he used to do that. Like there's these certain connections. His main thing was, is when you're connected to the spirit world, they're all there to help you. And so you've got, you know, uh, let's talk for instance, and I don't want to, you know, take a lot of control of this conversation, but um, there are people that all these different chapels and churches around here, and they come here a lot of times, like let's say for Friday healing circles, they're not, they actually were, um, um, they became reverends here. They done all quite a bit of teachings here. And then they just moved on and went to other things. And so they'll come back and they'll say things like uh, the temple, the temple has teachings of like Kuan Yin, you know, have anybody heard of Kuan Yin and uh, the violet fire? And they talk about all these little different things. And they say, oh, you're, you have Kuan Yin with you. And so I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm nodding yes, because I know Kuan Yin is inside of me. Like I am a Kuan Yin, you know? But they're, the way they think of it is, is it's on the outside. And so I think angels can all be ignited from us because we have that power to be able to have who we, I wouldn't say who, but which ones are the most supportive within us mm -hmm. at any given time. We just ask for it. And that to me is super sensitive for me because when I was young, that's how I got addressed at nine was from the angels when I was crying saying, why do I have this life? They said, when you're 46 and here's these angels that come through with this big bright light, you know, and they're telling me what's going on. That's when I verbatim was like, I believe, I believe in those angels. You know, I believe I asked for it. I believe they came to me because they're from me. They came to remind me what I'm doing, why I was here in the first place. So does that, does mm -hmm. that answer? Yeah. Yes, Anytime you. you want them, you got it. And it's like, it's kind of like that thing, like what you were saying on the outside, like you can, you, you can have it now. You can have all of it at any minute. And it's well, just, I talk, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, Julie, I talk to mine and they have names and they have personalities and they have specific jobs they do for me. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. sometimes the jobs cross over each other. You know, I mean, in other words, it, uh, like JT might be for this, but then so we'll jump in and do or whatever. And my guides are, I have animals. And, uh, People. I'll come closer to you. I have angels. So it's a, it's a pretty interesting, it's an interesting world up there or in there, whichever. I mean, and I'm very aware of that part of me. So, but I, I think of them as living beings, just this is real as Angie and Jennifer yeah. and Tracy and Amy. And like, a, I was just having this conversation with someone about, uh, she was saying, uh, she, she had come by and she was saying, I'm connected to the, um, uh, the fairy family, you know, whatever. She was trying to explain to me what, you know, what empowerment she had. And she's a reverend here. And, um, I was like, wow, you know, we all have that, you know, it's 
I don't, I really don't feel like anybody's without something. Mm -hmm. And so it's very, um, I feel like uh, when someone's really empowered that they have something that's super wonderful, um, but you're not alone. There's a, everyone has that ability, you know, and um, it's hard for me to have a conversation with someone that um, is kind of sharing something very special that they think they're the only ones who have it. And I'm like, I don't say anything now. I just don't say anything because I'm like, I just say, that's wonderful. You know, I'm glad that they're experiencing that. But at the same time, our whole, everyone has this ability to have it all. And so um, if, if they don't know they have it, then it's, it would be good to develop that and be able to utilize it if they could, you know, like fairies to me, it's like, those are our joy uh, guides, you know, and, but they do have a lot of work to do. You know, you'll see them, you know, every once in a while, you see the little light flickering around or whatever, but they've mostly, they want us to be of joy, you know, and there's a, uh, yeah, we're so dang serious. <laughs> You know, we got lots of work to do. So. I don't think it's about awareness in every every aspect. And I think when you first become aware, it's pretty exciting stuff. Oh, it is. And then I, you have to remind yourself after it becomes mundane that it's pretty exciting stuff. <laughs> it is. Like, I just recently, Lady J, I recently, because I drive so long, um, you know, you get to a certain point where, you know, if you know this stuff, you're kind of like, oh, same stuff over and over kind of. Uh, recently, I, I, you know, just by using Audible, I've just gotten re- um re what do you want to call it i don't know but i just reestablished anything about mediums and like i've never through this whole teaching process reverend david was like spend the time in whatever you're spending in like let's say the metaphysical principles that's coming up okay spend that time only on that don't go running off to another church don't go you know, he was being, he was just me and him. And he said, look, I'm just going to be straight with you. Everyone does it. He goes, everyone will try to get as much, you know, from here, from there. And they keep grabbing on to all these things. And they got 20 things going on and they're juggling and they're now they're getting confused with the information. And he said, just spend time in this development and don't do anything else. Promise me that. And we already had talked about, you know, that I would be starting to get into, you know, become a reverend and all these other things. So we did already have an establishment of what we'd be doing to get my development going. However, he said, just please do me that favor and just focus on that only and just absorb it and then read it over again. And I was like, oh, read this bit. One. Oh my God. So once I've done all that, then it's kind of like, you know, I, I didn't, I never read about any other medium. I never um, got other readings outside of anything. I want, you know, cause I used to do that all the time when I was younger, get readings here and there. My mom was really into that. And so I just um, never looked up any of the most popular uh, mediums or anything like that. And then once all of this development, you know, once I started, you know, doing the teachings and, you know, started teaching it out, um, I all of a sudden just got audible. And now I have all these books I've read about all these different mediums, auras now, Amy, I got a book on, on there. We're talking about auras, so I'm doing auras. And I'm just hearing the other side of what someone's saying. And it's honestly, I have not yet had anyone say anything any different, but it's very exciting because it's new again. And so it's, uh, it's like I'm re-examining the teachings, but in someone else's 
you know, thought process. And I'm also listening to a medium that uh, um, I can't think of his name right now. Anyway, he's on Netflix. If you guys ever, you know, oh, um, it, it's actually. Oh, I watch him. The one that the one that scribbles. Yeah. What? I, you know, I, I just watched all of them. What's his name? He looks like a. I don't remember. I'm, I'm awful at not listening to a name. He's a cute young guy. He's super young. And mm -hmm. he's a medium and he travels around and he does all, does the things that we do. And it's like, I, the only thing, you know, I think for him is like, oh my gosh, he's stretching his health out so much because yeah. he does that way ahead. Do you notice that? Like he's, he's, he's talking to his mom and his sister about what he's getting for this reading. And he's not doing it like right when he's with the person. So he's stretching out the whole day. Like right when he wakes up, he's getting messages. Right. He's prepping for his, you know, he's going to do one. And then like, tour, you know, three or four hours later, he's doing it. And then he's able to express, but that's really stretching your body. Yeah. He, he says he's making himself sick and he's already had, his name is uh, Tyler Henry. That's okay. it. He's, yeah, and I watched all of them one day. It's super fun. So you're talking he's about precious. reigniting? Yeah. With, what was that? I said he's just precious. He is. I mean, it's just great to, I almost feel like I'm, I've got my friend there. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. It's super fun because we do this work and I sometimes feel like nobody sees us. You know, it's this little chapel and we do all this, you know, you know, but we're teaching, we're, we're a teaching chapel. And so it's been going on since 1960. However, the ones that were um, the reverends prior to David, again, like what he was saying was, is they, they were doing some things, but they weren't doing a lot of the teachings. They were, um, it was kind of minimal and they were doing, you know, the Sunday services and things like that. And they were doing things for spirit uh, talking through and stuff like that, but they weren't doing a lot of events. And he was like, the chapel can survive if we actually ask for money because they weren't, there was no money involved at all. And so how do you keep the lights on and stuff? And, right. you know, there's a lot of expense to this. And um, so he said, well, let's make a curriculum. Let's make a, you know, the program. And they were like, what are you talking about? You're, you know, that's when she laughed at him. And, uh, but he did it. And um, so it's evolved into, you know, a teaching chapel now. And so it's when I first came into spiritualism, knowing what that was, I had been doing it all along. I just never knew what the word spiritualism was. I just knew channeling. I knew psychic, I, you know, all those things. I just, when I, when he told me spiritualism, I was like, what is spiritual? He hands me the book for uh, Conan Doyle about spiritualism. <laughs> and he's like, you need to read this. And I was like, oh, well, that's what I do. You know, I've been doing that all along. I was like, oh, okay. That's spiritualism. You know, the continuity of life. And so I was, you know, when I became a reverend, I was kind of nervous about telling people that I'm a spiritualist reverend because I thought, oh my God, they're gonna, you know, they're gonna take me to the stake, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and quite frankly, there's been so many experiences where people have been totally amazed by something that came through for them just in a conversation. Um, there was one that, uh, in a quick nutshell, and we'll, we'll shut this one down because we're getting close. Um, there was a guy who uh, I was getting, I was working with my ex-husband and he's a landscape architect. And that day I happened to go out with him. It was my day off. And I was like, mm. and this spirit kept running around the truck and we were trying to load up everything. And he kept jugging, ju you know, running around and stuff. And I was like, what is going on here? And I go, do you see him? And he, it, my ex-husband's like, what are you talking about? Just get in the truck, will you? And, you know, he's from Scotland. So he's like, what are you talking about? Just get in the truck. And he's trying to get me going. And I'm like, wait, 
stop it. I was like trying to tell the spirit stop. And it was very, very active. And this was like, kind of a surprise to me because usually spirits would come differently Mm -hmm. and he would not stop. And I said, okay, you, I'm going to do the David thing. You, whatever you got going on, whatever you need to do, you do it when we're in our development class. And so that stopped and we had gone out like two days later and John was all about the, the, um, sorry, that's his name. Um, oops, uh, the person that I was with was all about going to the pub because, you know, Scotland, you know, and so that's where we went to go meet this person for his birthday, and we are sitting there, and I looked over at the person to the right of me, and then all of a sudden, this spirit started doing that thing again, and I go, oh, God, no, not now, not now, stop it. I was like, just stop it, and I go, um, and he goes, tell him, tell him, tell him, tell him, tell him, tell him. I was like, oh my God. I was like, oh, uh, I need to tell you something. And you're probably, you know, I didn't even know what was going to come out. I just started to say it. And I said, I need to tell you this. And he goes, what is it? I go, there's this guy that is running around you and he's really hyper and he won't stop. And he did it earlier a couple of days ago. And he keeps saying the cans, the cans, the cans, the cans, the cans. And he goes, he got really scared and he got up and he went to the bathroom. And I was like, what the heck is going on? Right. So I'm waiting. I'm like, oh God. And he wants to say more. He's just, he's like, I'm like, oh God, what's going to go on? And the guy freaked out. He turned like pale. He came back and he sat down. He goes, okay. And this is my uncle. What does he have to say? And I was like, he knew it was a spirit. He knew it was a spirit. So he says to me, and he's Catholic as heck, and he would never believe in something like this. And he goes, what is it? And I, and I said, well, he's saying that the cans, you're going to need to remove the cans. And he goes, and I said, and, you, and he goes, stop right there. He goes, he goes, come closer. And I, and I said, okay. And he goes, you need to whisper this. It was like a secret. And I go, oh, he says, you've got money in there and you've got to remove it now. Get on it. And he goes, I will. He goes, that's true. And I go, what is true? And he goes, and I I was out of it. So I didn't really know what I said. And I said, and, and that was it. And, and he, and then I came to, and he says, I go, what's true. And he said, the cans. And I go, what about the cans? And he goes, and I couldn't justify, cause I was kind of new at this. I couldn't justify what was going on here. And he goes, I have cans that I buried in my backyard and I did something uh, illegal and I have money in those cans in the, my backyard and I need to empty them out. And so what happened was, I was like, please don't tell me anything. I want to know what you're talking about. Come to find out, he actually got arrested. <laughs> yeah. So he, it, it wasn't due to me. He did another thing that he did for money and he got in trouble and he got caught. But the truth is his, his uncle was trying to help him, help him. Tell him to get that thing out of there but he decided to do it again oh so he wouldn't get caught no he tried to do another deal Deal. illegal deal and he got caught doing it so he actually did what he his uncle told him but he got sticky fingers and wanted to do it again so anyway the whole bottom line is spirit was on it and was telling him yeah i have a question before we close when Reverend David brings through Dr. Beck, what does he do to protect, not protect himself, but to take care of his body? Because it takes a lot of energy to do that channel. It certainly does. Okay, so uh, really quickly, and I apologize for everyone, it's been a little bit over an hour. Um, he and I both, so he's taught me this too. Um, we will fast. This is just, okay, so Reverend David and myself, we both do this just naturally. We will only eat from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. We eat 
three meals or two meals. We don't really, we definitely don't eat after six o'clock and that's intermittent fasting. Right. So that actually helps our digestion digestion really help uh, gratefully so that it has time to, uh, you know, get rid of all the, you know, impurities and all that stuff. Then when we do do a channeling, we will fast that whole morning until that happens. Uh, sometimes we, uh, they ask us to eat something differently to get our cells um, cleared out, cleaned out um, so that we can meet the vibration. So they're, they're trying to come down and meet our vibration while we're going, well, this is just a visual. So they're like, you know, it looks like this lady J kind of like, like the visuals, like right. we're trying to meet in the middle. And if, if our vibration is too low, if we're eating a whole bunch of meat, it's difficult for them to be able to connect. Come down far enough because you can't get up high enough. Right. Okay. So I'll just so, do a lot of greens, like, you know, wheatgrass juices, all that stuff. I just do whatever to try to go a little bit more chlorophyll, that kind of stuff to get myself alkaline. So you do the wheatgrass before the channel. I try to do it all, you know, as much as I can now. Now I just, so it's changed a lot. Like I used to eat out foods and stuff like, you know, fast food even back in the day. And then it got to a point where, you know, I was eating at home and then it got to a point where I don't really eat out at all. And now it's, you know, all green, like a lot of green. Sometimes I have meats, but I try not to put it anywhere around my channeling at all. Yeah. Right. I just can't digest it fast enough for it to, and I usually know it when I'm in a channel, like I know when it's coming up. And then what do you do after the channeling to build yourself back up? Uh, that, so you really want to just, first of all, it depends on how many people are around in this channeling. Because if you have a lot of people, you in the beginning, you may get really, really tired. And you first want to have water. Um, you probably really don't want to be around in a uh, event type setting. So you want to work around your schedule where you're just more alone so that you could just recalibrate the cells again and get back to your regular mode. Because if you're, it wears you down too much from a channeling, you're so open, you got to close yourself up more. Um, so if you're really open and then you go and have a, you go to a birthday session afterwards, that's not very healthy. Right. You know, it's leaving you open to the universe and yeah. you gotta, like, you gotta, you gotta restore. Love your body and spend some time in the quiet. Why, why would one do that? I mean, what, what, what's the value that's worth the price? Okay, um, say that one more time. We're gonna do this last question. I hope you don't mind and we'll shut this down because Julie's got to get going here too. Oh, I can just go, you guys can. What's, well, I'm just curious, what's the value? I mean, it it's costly as far as your body uh, oh. long-term health. What What's the value to it that makes you want to do it? Well, okay, so. Have a good week, Julie. Bye, Lady J. Bye, Julie. <laughs> um, I would say the reason why you would want to do this type of work is really for what spirit and you have together. Like, what is it that you, why did they come to do this work? Um, in my type setting, I used to have a life with that person. And we're just resending out the message and we're, we're still working in what we originally did to begin with to give it out to the world. So we have work to do to, to communicate it out, to get the people to remember. So um, I think it's different for everyone, but mostly I believe that they're, they have the same thing going on. They come from being an ancient 
and they want to deliver what's happening right now, what happened then to get them to recall who they're, who they truly are. I think it's all kind of the same message. If you find, like, if you listen to channel, like different channelers, they all kind of have that same message. Right. Yeah. They're all, they're all trying to get us to make the world better. Absolutely. And they're very loving and very matter of fact, you know, they're like, you know, <laughs> they're like really very positive, very, yeah. very strong and positive. Yeah. Uh, but, but really want to, uh, the, the, I said, but they really want, <laughs> they really want people to um, expand, expand yeah. and remind themselves why they came, not just sitting on their tough, you know? Yeah. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. And thank you. Thank Bless you, Reverend you. Angie. Thank um, you. Bless you. We'll do our closing words and um, come on back for order next week. And uh, my apologies for the long, long class. All no right. Problem. It's very interesting. Oh, thank you. Mother, Father, God, we give gratitude and thank yous for this day. We ask for your infinite light of protection to be with us and through us as we go on our path. So when we meet those on our path, we share the love that is so abundant. We give thanks for this day. Amen. Amen. And thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Guys. Have a good week, everybody. You too. Bye, you too. Jennifer. Bye, Bye. Bye.